Last week, uh, the SABC Current Affairs show Focus went to the Blythdale Beach on the Guazulu-Natal North Coast in search of the bodies of the missing victims of the convicted pedophile Hart van Royen. Focus was accompanied by the police and members of the Guazulu-Natal Heritage Organization, AMAFA. They did the excavation. Uh, a 15-month investigation by the show Focus indicated that the children could be buried under a stormwater pipe on the beach. Nothing was found, however, uh, only a five meters of a pipe that is about 30 meters long that was dug up. In the studio now, I'm joined by uh, the executive producer of Focus, Alet van Rensbeck Wright. Good morning to you, Alet. Thank you so much for, for talking to us. But just before we have a chat with you, let us just take a look at uh, uh, the background on, on the story. Between August 1988 and November 1989, six young girls aged between 11 and 14 were kidnapped in different parts of South Africa. Now, more than 28 years later, they are still missing. The whole country was shaken and parents were keeping a close eye on their children. In January 1990, a 16-year-old girl was abducted by a middle-aged blonde woman in Pretoria. She was taken to this house in Capital Park where she was drugged. The girl managed to escape from the house and that was when police connected the disappearance of the young girls to this couple. Convicted pedophile Gert van Rooyen and his girlfriend Joey Haroff. Van Rooyen and Haroff died four days later. According to police they committed suicide during a high speed chase with police. Police searched the couple's house which was later demolished and the property was dug up. Nothing was found. Over the years, police have followed up several leads and many properties were searched and some were also dug up. Until today, it's considered to be one of the biggest mysteries of South Africa. What happened to the missing girls? All right, that was just the background to the story. Let's uh, just continue our discussion with Focus Executive Producer Alet van Rensbeck Wright. Alet, good morning to you once again. Let's just start with this five-meter pipe. What is happening, Ria? What did you find upon your investigations? Well, it started with a supernatural, with a little boy who saw a ghost. And um, to cut a long story short, we started investigating and we realized that it's unlikely that, the, that this person, this thing or whatever befriended the child was an imaginary friend. We realized it must have been something spiritual. Mm -hmm. And then we started investigating, like hard investigations with facts, and we'd, we realized that Blythdale had previously been the focus of the police investigation. So eventually um, we thought that two of the children could be buried under the stormwater pipe on Blythdale Beach. Okay. We think that a third one might be close by, also buried mm -hmm. on the dunes in the sand. And then the police went with us and we dug up the area. And um, yes, they did, only did five meters because we had a lot of problems. I think we were in way over our heads. We didn't have enough equipment. We wasted mm -hmm. a lot of time. Mm -hmm. uh, former Springbok captain Gary Teichman assisted and provided some heavy machinery like excavators. And then we ran out of time. Mm -hmm. So we did only five meters of a pipe that's about 30 meters. And I feel at this stage, we cannot say the children are under the pipe, yeah. but we also cannot say they are not under the pipe right. until we've searched the whole All pipe. All right, let's just go back to the little boy. Is he perhaps related to any of the missing kids? And No. Uh, yeah. No, he, is, um, he comes from a family where the grandmother... And her son, who is his father, they all claim they can see spirits. Oh, okay. And um, I think my, I don't know enough about these mm -hmm. things, but um, from what I gather, it's that they say that if spirits want to communicate, they'll choose people who can actually hear them and see them. Yeah. So, um, yes, that's, that's where it all started. Mm -hmm. But we did really, really a lot of investigations. Mm -hmm. And um, it's clear that there is a Blythdale link with Gert van So Rooyen. the pieces of the puzzle are coming together. Yes. Yeah. So w what happens now? And I, I mean, like, the question that comes to my mind is, why would Gert van Rooyen bury the children under the pipe if it took you so long to actually, you know, excavate it? That beach is different to, for example, Umschloti, which is south of um, Blythdale. And Gert used to frequent Umschloti. He used to go there a lot. Um, Umschloti washes away during floods. I remember as a young journalist many years ago how many times I had to cover stories of that beach being washed away. So anyone who wants to hide something wouldn't bury it there. Blythdale is close by. It's the opposite. When there are storms or there's spring tide, it, the beach is covered um, by sand and 
with this pipe, when I was there in March last year, this pipe, the, the mouth of the pipe was actually exposed. Mm -hmm. And the layer of sand, it was only a thin layer of sand yeah. over the pipe. So it would have been very easy for me, especially because there was construction on the beach. Oh. Apparently they lengthened mm -hmm. the pipe. Mm -hmm. It would have been very easy for me. And he would have known that that pipe never, ever is exposed oh, by storms. Yeah. So what happens next now? What, what's happening? I've happens? approached the police. Officially, I, I follow the official channels. And I've written an email you know, via the communications, head of communications, because that's how we as the media have yeah. to work. And I've requested, I've asked very nicely if they could please go back and if we could just open up that whole pipe. Mm -hmm. Because until we've done that, we can't say they're not there. Yeah. Um, so we're waiting for that. And there's also um, stories about three skeletons that were found on that same beach in 1992. Um, also that they find maybe those skeletons and test them because they didn't have DNA in those days. Oh, all right. No, all the best. Uh, of thank course, you. it is a developing story. We would uh, keep, be keeping tabs on it. And thank you so much for chatting to us. Thank you. All right. Well, there you have it. Uh, uh, that is Aled van Rensbeck, right? Uh, the executive uh, producer for Focus, talking to us about it's devastating 30 years later, uh, but we'll surely be watching Focus for the latest in relation to this matter.